Hi, and thanks for watching. I'm Michael Alden. Today we're going to be talking about a subject that affects nearly every human being at some point in their life, and that subject is brain health. Research confirms that millions of Americans are suffering with some sort of mental dysfunction, from inability to recall events to forgetting where you put your keys to just not being able to get things done. If you or a loved one suffer with memory loss, inability to focus and concentrate, and want to learn how to get your mental edge back, you're not going to want to miss this next half an hour. Please help me welcome Mr. John Abdo. John, thanks for being my guest. Mike, it's a pleasure. Thanks so much for the invitation. I had mentioned earlier, you know, people are always forgetting things like their keys or, or people will walk into a room and just not remember, you know, why they walked into a room. Or, you know, I have employees that can't get things done because they can't concentrate. Right. You know, what's going on? Why is this happening? Well, let me give an analogy of, of, of what's going on in the brain. Well, back in the mid-1970s, new breakthrough technology came out called MRI, which is Magnetic Resonance Imagery, PET, Positron Emission Tomography, CAT scan, Computerized Axial Tomography. What this does is investigates the brain. Tomography is the geography of the brain. That's the part. CAT scan, PET scan, MRI could show the physiology how the brain functions. We have what we call dendrites, neurons inside our brain and they connect what we call neurotransmitters. If this is an axon or a neuron, and these are the dendrites. When people forget things, those dendrites, through the synapses and the neurotransmitters, regress from one another and they can't make connection. We don't lose that information. That information is always in our body. It's the ability for it to, uh, to, to connect. Why does it Co happen though? But, 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 but why does it like... Poor nutrition, okay. stress, Stress degradates the brain. We have environmental stress, we have financial stress, we have hormonal imbalances. We're at the highest rate of obesity than ever. Just 30 years ago, obesity in the United States was 10 to 12 per percent. Right. Today it's over 30 percent. Do the math, over 300 million people, 100 million people in this country are overweight. That's pretty depressing. According to a major World Health Organization, they state one in seven people is affected by some type of mental disorder. Everything from a headache, to dementia, to Parkinson, to bipolar, whatever. Other, other studies have said one in four people. There are some doctors that say no family is not affected by some kind of mental disorder, which you mentioned at the beginning of the show. In today's day and age, people's bodies are getting old and so are their brains they're getting old because they're not wired properly. Nutrition and proper activity rewires the neuronal connections to where now, all of a sudden, the mental apartment, if you got closets and drawers and filing cabinets and, and cupboards and, and containers that contain all this information, now all of a sudden you can connect and gather all the information so you know your PIN number, you know your social security number, you know the phone numbers, you know everything you need to, to know at the, at, at the tip of your tongue. It's not in the back of your mind. You know, one of the things that really uh, I'm starting to see every day uh, is uh, doctors are, are prescribing these drugs for, for kids who have, you know, attention deficit <laughs> disorder. Basically, the inability to concentrate, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, what's going on? Like, why are these doctors giving these, these kids these drugs all, all well, the time? Well, you know, let me d d go to, to the end result. They're trying to get people addicted to a drug. That, that's a lifelong dependency. Right. They're changing brain chemistry synthetically. We know that nutrition can do the same thing that many of these drugs do. These drugs are designed to, to work on the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the pineal, that uh, the brain produces over 50 chemicals. We have our own pharmacy inside our own brains that produces serotonin, dopamine, uh, all of our endorphins, which are our sex hormones, our reproductive hormones, our pain-killing hormones, our happy hormones, our mood hormones, our creative hormones. So when you get a kid that has attention deficit disorder or hyperactivity disorder, kids are supposed to be hyper, right? right? right. Fast forward that to adults. Adults today, depression is the number one mental illness. Right. And it's affecting everybody. And the reason is there's a lot to be depressed about today. Sure. Because I talked about highest rates of diabetes, uh, the depression. In order for the brain to be nourished, it has to have a certain entryway. And I'm gonna go back in history a little bit because back in the 1800s, two European immunologists who were also studying bacteria and hematology, they were studying how bacteria goes through the bloodstream. They injected a colored dye into the body. Okay. And what they found is that this colored dye stained all of the organs in the body, but it didn't stain the brain. And they're wondering, why not? So in reverse, they took that colored dye, they stained the brain, it stained the brain, but it didn't go anywhere else in the body. They discovered something, ladies and gentlemen, this is real remarkable, it's called the blood-brain barrier. Okay. The blood-brain barrier is like that chain link fence, you know, that, that separates the two territories. It allows only selective or certain entry of drugs or nutrition into, in, into the brain chemistry. 
in order for a product to work, a nutritional product to work, it has to cross the blood-brain barrier. Mm. You could pop a pill, and there's a lot of pills out there that claim this, that, or the other. It could be in your body, but it will not cross the blood-brain barrier. What, you know, we're talking again, obviously, about brain function uh, and ability to focus and, and concentrate, but when does it start to decline? Because I, I, when I think about it, I start to think um, as you get older. In fact, I'm noticing now, uh, as I get older, that uh, things just don't seem to come to me as quickly. Is it, is it age? Is it natural? Or, or what can we do to, to, to stop it? Well, you know, in, in today's day and age, we're surrounded by so much technology and so much stress. There's so much to think about. Right. Back in the good old days, when I was in high school, if someone wanted to talk with you on the phone, you had to be home when that phone rang. Right. We didn't even have answering machines back then. <laughs> right. Now you're driving through traffic, you're getting texts and phone calls, all this other stuff. So the brain is multitasking and it's burning out at short circuit, uh, it has, has a short circuit going on all the time. Okay. It declines at any age. I mean, you talk about children with attention deficit disorder. There's children now today that are depressed. That's a mental illness. Sure. With cognitive disorder, with learning disabilities, they can't remember, they can't create, they, 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 their intelligent levels are, are really low. Is, is most of it because of nutrition or because of the environment? I mean, it, it seems in the 70s that there was no such thing as attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Now all of a sudden everyone has it. <laughs> yeah. it why yeah. is it? Is well, it, it's, just, it's just like some of the other old people diseases. You got yeah. Parkinson, Alzheimer, bipolar, Polar, uh, dementia, you got all these things. Back in the good old days, it was just the person seen on. Right, you know? right. And a lot of it, and most of it, in my opinion, is because the drug companies need to find a specific uh, ailment and go, right. oh, we got a drug specifically so for we can that. Sell it. You know, basically, it's an imbalance uh, of brain chemistry. Uh, the wiring, the connections have severed or atrophied, which can regenerate. Uh, with proper nutrition and proper lifestyle changes. And other than it crossing the blood-brain barrier, I mentioned mitochondria. Mitochondria are the power sources inside the body. In the health and fitness world, which I teach people in my fitness classes to lose body fat, mitochondria is like the fireplace in your home. Okay. You know the fireplace in your home, there's a big stack of logs, it's like, hey, you know, I want to burn that stack of logs. The logs, the analogy is your love handles or body fat. Right. So if you've got a small fireplace, you've got a big stack of logs, it's going to take you a long time to burn that. Sure. But how about taking that mitochondria or that fireplace, making it bigger, making it hotter, and all of a sudden, boom, you're a fat-burning machine. You're able to shuttle that fat inside the mitochondria. Brain has mitochondria at the same time. But additionally, muscle only has the ability to hypertrophy, which means make what it already has bigger. The brain has the ability with its mitochondria to make the bigger, so you got a bigger fireplace, but it has what we call hyperplasia to increase the number or the population of mitochondria inside your brain. So now all of a sudden you got you got thousands of fireplaces, if not millions of fireplaces in your home, boom, all of a sudden you're empowered with so much more energy. So when you nourish your brain properly, this, these are the organic nutrients that make that cellular physiology happen. And when I talk about animal studies, Mike, when you study a product on an animal, whether it's a food, a drug, or a, or a nutritional product, animals don't have any other dynamics but just them being an animal. Right. When, when you go to human studies, this guy's got financial problems, she's having problems with her divorce, all this other stuff. So when they come into laboratories, like, is this pill working or not? Animals are probably the best testers of a nutritional product. For instance, with, with a sexual or hormone boosting product. You get animals cohabitating and you have them chew on this herb and all of a sudden they start having sex, right. you know that herb works, right? If you have a rat on a, on, a, on a treadmill, right? And all of a sudden they're running faster and longer because they ate this nutritional supplement, you know that that's working. Right. Same thing with athletes. When you test an athlete, you, you're into working out, sure. right? If a guy could bench press 300 pounds and that's all he's been doing for the whole last year and he takes a muscle building supplement, he's doing 310, 320, it's because of that supplement. Right. The brain directly gives you your memory and your focus and your concentration, but indirectly, the brain is responsible for every system in the body. Sure. We have the voluntary system. You're holding up that bottle. I'm holding up the bottle. If I curl a dumbbell, that's voluntary. We tell our muscles to move, right? But how about the involuntary system, which is called the autonomic system? Our heart beats at approximately, on average, 72 beats per minute, which is over 100,000 beats per day, which is over 30 million beats per year. Our, our respiration, our digestion. We don't tell our bodies to do these things. It's all operated by the brain. Right. The healthier your brain is, the healthier your body is, the healthier your life is, the more productive you are. When you nourish the brain, all of a sudden, everything in your life becomes better because your brain is the organism that operates everything. In fact, it, you know, I, I talked about 
you know, how the brain operates the heart, right? Sure. Well, th we have the natural defense mechanisms in the body. It's getting hot in the studio here and I'm sweating a little bit, right? right. I'm not telling myself to sweat. Right. My brain is saying, hey, it's hot in here. So what it's doing, a natural defense mechanism to heat, it circulates water from my blood and from my muscles to the surface of the skin to cool myself off. Right. If the studio director here, turn up the air conditioning and start started getting cold, my muscles would start shivering to right. create friction to get me warm. I don't tell myself that. That's a natural defense mechanism to it. The, uh, the garden omelet I had for breakfast this morning, I'm digesting it right now. And, and the nutrients from there are, are simulating in through my bloodstream. I'm not telling